Hello everyone, my name is Arun. Welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be taking, having a sneak peek and a tour of the new Linux distribution, Fedora version number 26. Now, Fedora version number 26 is actually a free and open source Linux distribution based on the commercial one, Red Hat. Now, uh, in this video, we'll, we'll be looking at all the features and the new software that are available in this distribution. So this will be more like a sneak peek tour. So if you if you're like someone who just uh, trying to get inside the Linux distribution Linux family and trying to see how the Linux distributions are and you want to use Fedora as a first distribution or if you're already familiar with other Linux distribution you want to try Fedora for the first time and but you're like a little hesitant to start this video would be like a walk through uh, so walk through so that you can break the ice and then, and then directly jump into it okay so let's get started. The version I'm looking at is the latest version, version number 26, which came just about three days ago, if I remember, if I, if I remember correctly. And um, this version is shipped with uh, the latest version of GNOME Desktop. Now, if you want, if you, there are like uh, other versions of uh, Fedora available, available, okay, with other desktops, for instance, K, like KDE, XFCE. Uh, LXDE, Mate, Cinnamon, and so on. Okay, the primary uh, desktop and the default desktop for Fedora is GNOME. Okay, so let's get started. Just like any other any other GNOME uh, GNOME based uh, Linux distribution, Fedora comes up with a clean slate, uh, clean desktop, uh, clean wallpaper desktop setting wherein you can't keep any folders in. That's actually better for se setting that is very common with uh, GN uh, GNOME for that matter. You have on the title bar on the top you have in the middle you have a date you have a date and time and if you have the internet connected this will show you uh, this will show you uh, what do you call the weather information or any news information for that matter if there are any uh, messages in the uh, operating system like any announcements or notification they'll also pop up over here like uh, ejecting a pen drive or plugging up a new pen drive or uh, copying, copying finish or something like that. All those will be uh, available over here. And you have the calendar nicely attached to it, okay, with a good date, month, date, time, date, month, and view. And you can also select uh, in weather locations. You can also set, pick a city or a place where you live, and then connect it to the internet. And uh, weather, lo weather information can, will be av available that way. All right. So that's how it looks. And on the right, on the top top hand top right corner, you have the you have the da you have a small application notification menu wherein you have the wired connection. Yeah, this is this would be the network connection, volume control, battery or power, and then you have the live uh, you have the user account details over here. I'm just running this from the virtual box and with the live image, so. Uh, I, I my there's there's not much not much of user information over here, but if you install it, it works pretty well. Okay, and you have this drop down menu which again pops up, which again pops up this, and you also have the feature over here which will open up the se settings system settings, and then you have the option to lock your screen and then shut shut it down. Okay, other than uh, let's look at the settings overall. If you look at the overall settings over here, you have a background option. Through uh, wherein you can control the change of background on the lock screen, okay. And one uh, interesting thing about this distribution, okay, uh, this desktop uh, shipping is that they have a nice set of wallpapers. Usually, the wallpapers that come with GNOME are like, um, uh, how do I put it? They're not they're okayish, not special, not something uh, fa very fancy. Whereas this one is pretty nice. This collection is pretty good. Okay, they're trying to make it as attractive as possible for the, I mean, welcoming for the, welcoming for the users. And they also have, you can also put pictures and then you can specify any colors you want if, if you want them. And you also have this option for the background as well as the lock screen. And you have the notification settings wherein you can say which op application should be allowed to get, give any notification on where the notification should pop up or not. Okay, those will be ava available over here. You can connect to some online accounts. It's very typical of uh, Linux, uh, very typical of a GNOME application where you, you can connect to online accounts and then set them up over here. You also have the privacy settings. Okay, you also have, you have the privacy settings like screen lock on, uh, user history, uh, user history on and all. That is available and you can go over here and set up your language, language settings. You can also put uh, put uh, put search 
and you can activate the search and in during this search you can just go through the terminal option softwares softwares and contacts okay so multi multiple versions of searches are available so that's pretty good and it also and, and of course you have the hardware kind of configuration like the bluetooth color settings display keyboard mouse pad and touch pad network settings power if you have any printer connected to your internet i mean kind of the same uh, network you can do the access that sound controls uh, <coughs> touch touch pad I mean, touch tablet I mean, graphic tablets all those are available you can also set the time and time date and details over here okay so those are the some of the basic settings that are available so let's look at the software that are available so if i just click the activities on my top uh, right left corner or just press my windows key i'll uh, open up this activity activities uh, settings wherein on my left i have some i have this uh, ribbon bar i have this auto uh, hiding ribbon bar which has the icons of some very commonly used applications so in this you can see that the basic the default web browser is firefox and you have the evolution uh message messenger i mean uh, email client i guess i think so and you have the rhythm box video uh, music player as your default setting default music player and you have the shortwell um, uh, in image manager image manager and then you have the files uh, files files browser and uh, typical to a gnome desktop and then gnome uh, file manager uh, all the settings are actually pushed to the top pushed to the top and you don't have this minimize maximize option available by default that is a, a complaint i have about um, gnome for quite a while quite a while uh, other than that the icons are okay ish not okay not so not the pretty fancy but just about enough to give you a idea just about enough to give you a you know a neat look neat, neat look clean look for that matter and uh, over here you don't have the term i mean you, you don't have the terminal right click terminal option i think you can set it up you can set it up by opening up the tweak tools or some tweak tools let's see let's open up a terminal okay let's have a look at as to what's what's present in here so if i look at my latest kernel the, the kernel that it uses is like 4.11.8 not that that's one of the um, almost the very recent kernel that is available so sh they shipping it shipping it up very nicely yeah, i guess this kernel got released just just uh, last month i guess few weeks just less than 3 weeks so this is pretty decent enough and let's see let's look at the lsb release okay let's look at the lsb release okay not much is found so let's look at the memory memory usage megabytes by default it uses something around 1000 megabytes okay so let's look open this in the system monitor as well to see so if you look at it by default it uses like 1.2 to 1.3 gigabytes i guess it just cropped up and just increased uh, creeped up a bit because i was just playing around with other oper other software um this is a uh, I guess this would be a problem. Uh, this is something uh, I would complain about the desktop, not not more of an operating system. GNOME is not GNOME is not uh, known to be a, a light distribute light desktop for that matter. So that's a, that's a, that's about it. Okay, it's it's a bit um, it's a bit of a resource hog. But if you clean up uh, the cache let's cache memory, let's say you might uh, be able to acquire more. So if you look at the other uh, software that are available so if you look at the applications you have the boxes software that helps you to you know make virtual machines if multiple virtual uh, machines uh, yeah the simple calculator calendar application the cheese web browser in cheese webcam webcam viewer and you have a clocks uh, time for the time contacts uh, you have a documents this is a documents collection and then what else do we have a uh, uh, have over here you have a a simple uh, a simple uh, libreoffice suite not a full fledged libreoffice suite but a partial one but just about enough okay and the other you have the typical uh, so software center from uh, gnome this is pretty much relevant to uh, how uh, it might be present in ubuntu 
and over here you can directly go and install some software that you might require without much of a fuss so this is a good add this is a good add on and uh, i would recommend uh, this this one if you uh, if you install a gnome desktop let's say i strictly recommend you have this gnome tweak tool installed okay i guess uh, since i'm running this in the live user it's not working but anyway the point is if you uh, have it to uh, tweak tool installed and that will help you a lot and then what else do we have over here yeah as far as the search is concerned for the software that search is pretty good so not a pro not much of a problem and uh, kernel we saw about the kernel let's look at this uh, compiler compilers that are available so it, it is shipped with the basic uh, good version of gcc the gnu c compiler and uh, surprisingly it is very much uh, very much updated they are using version 7.1 and that's pretty good in a sense it, this is a very this is very recent that's not that's good and let's look at the python version so it uses the it uses uh, 2.7.13 and which was released in 31st May 2017 that's pretty good and, and it, it will just compile using uh, again another latest version of uh, GCC and now let's actually look at Python 3 uh, this uh, this uses the latest version again this is 3.6.1 so as well as the uh, software and the development so, uh, as well as the software setup is concerned programming environment is concerned uh, the uh, programming languages are up to up to date so this should be very this should be pretty good so let's look at office now let's look at LibreOffice. say okay let's look at writer and see which version it is um okay so let's look at the latest version okay this is a pretty isn't pretty recent one 5.3.4.1 uh, not not bad pretty good pretty recent and uh, and it rendered pretty well uh, as if it's I guess there was a complaint uh, with gnome for not rendering Qt applications properly and what about this is this a Qt application um, okay this is a GTK application so can't mm -hmm. so this renders pretty well okay so you, you might if you're like using some uh, qt based applications it might be rendered a little less little less okay other than this uh, one of the features they added recently is this nightlight feature so if i go to uh, display uh, displays okay i have this nightlight feature on so i can turn it on and then i can specify fr specify manually as to when I uh, when I have to um, when I have to activate or deactivate the nightlight. So if you're like very used to the com very used to working in front of the computers for a very long time, um, this feature will help you to cut down the cut down the blue light from the screen that help blue light from the screen that kind of disturbs the sleeping cycle for people. Okay. And uh, you can set the timing as to when it should start and when it should stop over here by manually or let it will be the natural sunset to sunrise kind of a scenario. You can set that up. This is a new feature they added. As far as the stability of this operating system is concerned, so far, um, so far uh, there haven't been much of an issue. I've been play around, playing around with this for a while. Uh, so far I didn't notice much. One of the best features about the Fedora is that this distribution is pretty stable and uh, it, uh, it is, uh, I, I would say it's not a beginner level distribution, slightly, uh, slightly, um, uh, slightly a complicated version, slightly uh, advanced level distribution. So I would call it as a, like an intermediate level distribution. Okay. The reason I put this is because if you're like a beginner and you want to use Linux, uh, want to get into uh, Linux, okay, Fedora would be a little more of a hard uh, learn hard learning curve I mean a steep learning curve to start with but uh, one of the good features about Fedora is that uh, I mean there's actually a good feature about um, Red Hat distributions in general the these ones are pretty stable and uh, very well very well secure so if you are more concerned about the security of the distribution and stability of it Fedora is and you want this to be on a free or an open source version as well Fedora is a good bet for you to look at
Okay, so far my uh, as far as my uh, views go by, this distribution looks pretty good and it's working out nicely. And it's good to see that they're um, good to see that they're including new software in it and making it better and better. That's all I have for you all in this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time in another interesting video. Till then, take care.